What up? So this is Foam Rolling 101, part of our Energize protocol. <clears throat> so I'm going to take you through four key moves that everyone needs to be doing. 99% of people living in the first world lifestyle have these things going on in their soft tissue. <sighs> Starting right here. Yeah. We're just doing a quick scan from the top of the spine down to the bottom. My hands are reaching, my chin is packed. I'm using my core. So that way my back stays straight and it's just my feet on the floor. Do that a couple of times, get a few good adjustments, some nice back cracks in there. And then start to shift to one side, the left side I'm showing you. And you just give your erector spinae, the muscles on the sides of your spine, a little, a little love. And then you're going to continue to rotate towards that lateral side. And especially getting down into the lower abs region, the obliques. And then settling right around here, right around like the nipple line, like kind of right up, tucked up under your tit is a muscle called the serratus, what we're looking for. It's going to feel a bit like a big knot. Somewhere in here, you can kind of lean forward and backwards until you find it. There it is. Until you find it. And then once you find it, you're just going to rest, relax, and breathe on it. Could be a five breath or so. If it's slow breath, that'll be about a minute. Ah, make sure that you, that arm is reaching straight overhead. And legs are curled up. And like I said, just let the breath work into that area and then gravity. And you're trying to relax into that knot. That's the first spot. Well, the spine technically is one, so this is number two. And then you're going to get the other side. Same exact thing. Just start to roll to your right as you move yourself up and down until you kind of get into some of the muckety muck where under your ribs, sides of the torso. Again, using my feet to move me around, nothing else is on the floor really at this point until I find my straightest muscle and then I can kind of lay, like just flop myself onto it. I'm making a point to have my neck really relaxed here. <sighs> and my ear is moving towards my upper arm. My chin is packed. This is a great video to be shooting. Feels so good. That's number two. Number three, you're going to reorient yourself. You're going to use the edge of the foam roller. Right here. Actually, I'm going to show you up close the first, uh, the, the serrated spot that we just did, just in case you want some extra help. Take a right run in here. This stuff is actually muscle. This isn't my ribs. This is the serratus muscle. And so I'm going to find whatever spot gives me the most sensation. And I'm just going to lay on it. And then I'm going to come to right up in here and kind of get the pec. Upper pec. Because what actually happens is the motion of the arm and in the shoulder gets restricted because the muscles that move through here connect right above, right between your collarbone and your boob. So, and that's the edge of the foam roller. And again, it could be different, slightly different spot depending on the day, depending on how much you've been doing this, 
my recommendation is that you do it every day. I do it right after my cold shower, right after I brush my teeth. I just come here and I do in this exact series for 10 minutes. So you're going to find the spot and then you're just going to linger on it. Again with the edge of the formula this time jamming into all that muscle. Feel free to move up and down, side to side, until you find something. And then what I like to do is rather than just breathe here the whole time, I also like to do some mobility work at reverse snow angel action. while the foam roller is working into those adhesions and those restrictions that make it hard for my arm to do this. Yeah, it's nice. I'll give that a minute, then same thing on the side, same exact routine, right? Find it, give it a breath or two, and then if you feel like it, with a straight arm, you reach forward, work it around to the side, spin it once you get to a straight, to a T-shape so that the thumb is down to finish going. And then work it back, thumb spins up, reach forward, just like that. That's the third spot. The fourth and final is I'm back to using the meat of the roller. And I'm gonna, my target is the inner thigh closer to the knee, but not exclusively. Anywhere on the inner thigh, I'm gonna get a good bit of sensation because these muscles uh, tend to be locked long because we don't use our core. These muscles end up doing all the work when our outer hips are shut down, so our inner hips and become the holding on for dear life. There we go. So we kind of have to play with the exact angle of, you know, your leg in this direction, but also how, if, it, if how it's spinning in this direction, right? Toes towards the floor, toes towards the wall until you find it. And like I said, you can get further up in your thigh, but the money is going to be much closer to your knee. There's like a, there's a big, big knot. Ooh, yeah, there it is. All right, I found it. I'll show you up close in a second. I'm just going to get the other side so you can see what my, the other part of my body is doing. So I think that's important. I've got like a slight angle. And then... My other, this other side of my body is active. Like this, now it's my left leg that's not being rolled is, uh, is sturdy. It's suspending me in the air. I'm, and I'm actively a lot, I'm trying to tuck my pelvis in a little bit, tuck my belt to my face. Sometimes I'm gonna feel like I get more Leverage if I extend, come up like this, keep going, and then yeah, I'm just once I find a spot, I'm gonna just try to hover right on top of it, like that. And the spot I'm talking about is like right here, right there. There's a lot of muscles that kind of are, can kind of intersect right in this area. Sartorius, your VMO, other muscles of your quad, uh, on the adductors that kind of run the whole side. So just feel around in there until you find it. And now I'm going to give you one last bonus feature because a big part of this equation of soft tissue for me is in my plantar fascia and in my calves. And that can be hard to foam roll because there's not, it's hard to get enough weight onto those spots when I foam roll. Uh, and 
there's other ways to do it, um, which I'll go into at a later date. But what I like to do is just kind of like a catch-all at the end of my foam rolling routine is do a little tuck-toed hips-to-heels action. This is in some of the decompressions that we do sometimes after a workout. But I like to do it also at the beginning of the day. Because again, the the target with the fascia is to not spend tons of time at once because the tissue is not as active as muscle tissue is. So it wants to be worked on more gradually. So if I can give it a couple minutes a day and spread out over a longer period of time, that's going to change the tone of my fascia much more. Uh, my fascia is going to respond to that much more readily than if I try to sit here and just mash it for, you know, 20, 30, 40 minutes like I used to do. Just a quick scan, hitting all the spots, just opening things up a little bit, changing the neural tone. That's what we're all about. There's nerves. There's six Six or sixty, I'm not sure. Six or sixty million nerves throughout your body's fascia. That's more than you have nerves in your eyes. So your ability to feel what your body is doing, where it is in space, what's going on on the inside is more developed than is your sense of sight. How wild is that? So train your sixth sense. Work into the neural tone of this fascia and feel what's happening right now with the toe stretch. My toes are tucked, plantar fascia, muscle in, in like the in my calves and the backs of my knees, even into my hip flexors. I'm getting it all at the same time. It's all connected. It's all one big fascial soup. Just a couple minutes. Breathing deep. Letting go. And then gently coming off of my toes with that pressure. That's it.